Hi, it's me, Fofi. I know it's been a while since my last Animal Crossing New Horizons video. See, when I made that, I kinda assumed that was going to be the last episode of the series. But no, every time I think I'm done with this game, I always wind up coming back eventually. So, I just live here now. This is my home. Forever. Uh, and by that, I mean Animal Crossing got an update. Last year, I went on all sorts of uh, adventures in Animal Crossing New Horizons. And by January, I kind of thought I had seen everything the game had to offer. But last month, Nintendo was just like, Heh, nah, here's a ton of new junk for you to waste your time on. Oh, and why not have an entire new game as a little extra DLC? Oh, okay. So let's see what's new. But first, I gotta give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, Raycon, the makers of the fantastic everyday earbuds. It's no secret that I'm a music guy, and I love listening to music while out on a walk or on my treadmill. But when I walk, my arms tend to swing back and forth like an old cartoon character. So back when I used wired earbuds, I'd accidentally knock them out all the time. But Raycon's everyday earbuds are wireless. They're built to stay put in your ear hole. And they even come with these custom gel tips for the perfect fit. So they're perfect whether you're walking walking on a treadmill, laying in bed, or phasing through different states of being. And of course, the sound quality is great. Very clear, great bass, and just an all-around comfortable listening experience. They sound just as good as their competition, but start at half the price. And they even come with this cute little carrying case that charges them in your dang pocket. Seriously, I started using Raycon earbuds back in like 2018, and I have not looked back since. I carry them with me everywhere I go. These things have been through a lot and still work like a charm. They're rocking eight hours of play time on a 32 hour battery life, they got a built in mic for Bluetooth calls, and they have a kind of soft rubber oil feel to them that's just so sleek. Not to mention they come in five different stylish colors. I have genuinely, genuinely loved my experience with Raycon earbuds so far. I'm so excited to be working with them again, and if you want to try them out for yourself, all you gotta do is click the top link in the description below, or go to buyraycon.com slash ferret and use the code HOLIDAY to get 15% off across the entire site. Grab a pair for yourself or get them as a holiday gift for a friend or family member. My mom loves listening to music, so I got her a pair and she's used them pretty much every day since. And shipping and returns are absolutely free, so it's no worry at all. Either way, I think you'll dig them. Big thanks to Raycon for sponsoring, and now let's get back to Animal Crossing. So for anyone who hasn't seen my last five Animal Crossing videos, I was tricked into a life of hard labor at the hands of Tom Nook, who sounds like Patrick Warburton because I want him to. I moved to a desert island with a rhino and a horse. I called the island an island because I'm funny. I built the island up to a four-star tourist location with zero help from anyone. Jerks. I went broke. I climbed out of debt. I screamed a lot. I was scammed several times, got chased by an axe murderer, killed a snowman, and celebrated the new year. It was fun. So now that we're all caught up, I emerge from my house, step out into the wildly overgrown front yard for the first time in nearly a year, and start making the rounds to see all the new stuff. And of course, by new, I mean old stuff that they're just now adding back to the game and acting like it's new. I head to the museum, talk to the curator Blathers, and he tells me he's trying to open a cafe inside the museum. See, this cafe, called The Roost, has been a part of most Animal Crossing games since Wild World on the DS. So it's not really a new thing, but it is cool to see it finally come to New Horizons. But of course, Blathers can't do this on his own. He's gotta have his old buddy Brewster come back to run the place. So he's like, we've got to find Brewster. But uh, I don't have a walk cycle animation, so I've got to stay here. You're on your own. Of course I am. No one else ever does anything around here. Well, luckily, to find Brewster, I gotta go through one of the other returning features, Cap'n. This dude's got a boat, and if you pay him a thousand nook miles, he'll give you a ride to a random island where you can, yeah, I don't know, do island stuff. And Cap'n sings you a little song on the way. It's nice. So we head off to find Brewster. You know, this worked out pretty well. I just get to kill two birds. Yeah, probably should have seen that one coming. Now I feel bad. Anyway, yeah, we hop to a new island and Brewster is literally right there. I go up to him and I'm like, hey, Blather sent me here to give you this job offer. You down? Okay. Well, that was easy. A couple days later, the roost is officially open. Let's check it out. Glad I waited 20 months for this. So I leave the roost never to return and I start running around my island. I say hi to my villagers. They say they thought I was dead. It's a funny little in joke we have. I attempted some group stretches. You don't know that I'm off. 
Maybe everyone else is. I visit my friend Sarah and steal $200,000 from her. It's a funny little in-joke we have. And I plant a garden. You know, the usual stuff. Now, before we move on, we should probably do another quick roll call on the island, because the lineup of villagers has actually changed a little since the last video. Most of the usuals are still here, kicking around. Tank, Renee, and Bella. Obviously, they threw me a birthday party. Now I'll never let them leave. Plus, Carlos, Hopkins, Zell, Annabelle, and Eric. But unfortunately, Jambet and Lobo moved away. Jambet moving actually hit hard, man. They were one of the first villagers who ever moved to an island. But now we have Ice Gorilla and Red Velvet Squirrel, also known as Hans and Pecan. Now you might be wondering how my first conversations and interactions with these villagers went. Well, they didn't. Yeah, I didn't really go out of my way to talk to my villagers a lot this time. Because why talk to people when you can creep around filming them? This is a joke. Please do not do that. <laughs> it's very not legal. But yeah, Nintendo went and added a first person camera to the game's photo mode. So now I can explore an island fully immersed in first person. Metroid Prime 4 looks a lot different than I expected. Honestly, this was the update I was the most excited for. It's slow, it's limited, but I just love seeing games from different perspectives. Especially a game like Animal Crossing where moving the camera around basically isn't a thing. I spent way more time just walking around my island getting fun footage than I probably should have. But enough goof off. We gotta get back to business. And for that, we actually gotta go off the island for a little while and hop over to Harv's Island. This is a little side area in the game I've just never really cared to talk about, because up until now, all you could do was fly here and talk to this dog, who probably did many very funny drugs in the 70s, and also has a photo studio you can use. I don't know, never really appealed to me. But now, with the update, there is a lot more to do over at Harv's. I fly over, and suddenly the whole island is opened up. I meet up with the guy, and he's like, hey, you you know how the old games had like actual shopping areas with a bunch of different stores? Yeah, so we're doing that again, but uh... Hold on! Let me guess. I have to pay for all of it, don't I? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. So we got this big old lot here with seven spots reserved for different shops, and each one costs... A hundred thousand dollars? You're telling me I gotta sink 700k into this? I, I didn't think it was possible, but this actually makes Tom Nook look generous. So yeah, I spent the next in-game week dropping 100k a day to get these shops built. And it only took a week because for some reason you're only allowed to fund one shop a day. Why? And all that for four shops that I can already access on the main island during the week, some bubblegum alpacas you can turn my watering can into a red watering can, a fortune teller who tells me the villager who calls me her best friend, is my friend, and an old turtle that all the Animal Crossing fans thought was dead acting as a glorified storage shed. I sure do love spending more than half my savings to access places where all I can do is spend even more money. Eh. I guess that's pretty standard for Animal Crossing at this point. But you know what? I'm sick of this game siphoning away all my money. Ever since I started this island, I've had to do all the work for no pay so that the 1% can just lounge around benefiting off me. I want to be the one benefiting from this crooked Animal Crossing capitalist system for once. And just then, I get a call from Tom Nook. Meet me at the airport in 10 minutes. Come alone. Aw, oh, cool, I'm gonna get murdered. Well, actually, once I get to the airport, Nook introduces me to a character named Lottie who offers me a job designing vacation homes. Clearly, the legends of toilet rooms spread like wildfire. And hey, if I'm gonna be doing backbreaking labor, I might as well be getting some bells for it. I say yes, and suddenly I'm whisked away to a new island and honestly, a whole new game. This is Animal Crossing Happy Home Paradise. Basically, Nintendo took an entire 3DS spin-off game from like 2015 and stapled it onto New Horizons as paid DLC. I arrive on this new island Island and meet up with Lottie, a monkey named Nico, and a manatee named Wardell. These guys are the Paradise Planners, and today, I become one of them. I change into my uniform, I'm assigned my first client, and I start designing. So designing homes in this mode is basically a much, much, much more convenient version of how you design things in the main game. You know how back on the main island, if you want to move a house, you have to pay a ton of money and wait like a day before it actually moves? And then if you're like, eh, wait, no, that needs to be like an inch further to the left, then that's another $50,000 and another day long wait. In Happy Home Paradise, Boom. Then on the inside, you have instant access to all sorts of furniture, wallpaper, flooring options. It's just so much easier. And I wasn't sure how I'd feel about it, but after my first couple of houses, I could already feel myself getting addicted. Here's my first house. The client wanted their entire house to be a reading room. So, you know, not a ton to work with there, but I think it turned out pretty well. Tried to section some things off so it doesn't feel like just room with chair. I mean, it's nowhere near as incredible as some of the designs I've seen online, but for the maker of toilet room, I think this is all right. Second house, yeah, I'm not quite as happy with that one. Purple Duck here wanted a spa for a house. 
I've never been to a spa before, so I was a little out of my element, but I did my best. And after those two kind of tutorial houses, I was sent out on my own to find new clients. Let's see. This person wants to live in an arcade. That's pretty cool. This person wants a house full of mushrooms. Ooh, this person wants a luxurious bathroom. I can do that. This dog wants a place to show off their bike. We're doing the toilet one. And so I present to you Toilet Room 3.0. The one where I actually tried. Not really sure how sanitary it is to sleep in your bathroom, but I just do what the client asks. But don't you worry, the spirit of the original toilet room lives on. You want a place to show off your bike? I'll give you a place to show off your bike. And boom! Damp basement, single light bulb, some bubble machines, bike dead center. What more could you ask for? What, a bed? How's that gonna show off your bike? Hope you like sleeping on concrete, have fun, bye! So then I make an ice house for a penguin, an office cubicle for a koala, and I even built a freaking school. And I am ready to collect my bells, head back home to an island, and rub it in Nook's face. Wait, what's this? Oh, this is Pokey. It's our exclusive currency. You can only use it here to buy more stuff to design houses, and the money will not transfer over to your main island at all. <sighs> That's better.